How's it going everybody? Today we are working on the truck again and we'll be showing you how to remove your throttle body. You may want to do this for a few reasons. One is to replace the gasket, two is to adjust any of the many sensors that are on it like the throttle position sensor or the dash pot or the idle air control valve. It's a pretty straightforward process. We're going to start off by undoing all these hoses on the air intake. Uh, you don't have to necessarily take off all the ones I'm taking off right now. You can take off less than just these. However, I chose to remove more of them so that I wouldn't have to put any undue stress on the intake uh, hose here. Once you have all the hose clamps disconnected, you can go ahead and remove the entire intake tubing here. Uh, this gives you a lot more space to work with. Again, you don't necessarily have to remove all of it, but it does make your life a little bit easier. It's a good idea to inspect this intake tube for any sort of cracks or breaks. This can cause vacuum leaks if left unattended. Now we can go ahead and turn our attention to actually removing the throttle body. We're going to start off by removing all the vacuum lines and breather hoses that go to the throttle body. Yours may have a few extra. My truck has virtually no creature comforts like AC or power steering, so I have less vacuum lines. We then have these two coolant lines at the bottom here, along with the electrical connector for the throttle position sensor. Here goes the breather hose to the crankcase. We can then go ahead and label off these vac lines if you might forget. They are pretty straightforward. They go from front to back, one through four, but it's a good, ha it's a good habit to get into to label hoses as you take them off. The throttle position sensor then just unclips thusly. And once we have that out of the way, we can then go ahead and remove the throttle cable by opening the throttle and then sliding the little nub out of the throttle body. There are two coolant lines that go to the idle air control valve down here underneath the uh, throttle body. It's a good idea to clamp them off to try to limit how much coolant you lose. You will lose a little bit, so have a pan underneath it to catch it, uh, but this does help limit the amount that you lose. You can then loosen the hose clamps with some pliers and remove the two coolant hoses. The throttle body is held onto the intake manifold by three 12 millimeter bolts and one 12 millimeter nut. We can go ahead and loosen these, and once we have them off, the throttle body is free to come off the car. With the throttle body off the truck, we can look at a few things that are worthwhile to check. First is the throttle position sensor seen here. Again, I'll talk about this a little bit later. Underneath the throttle body is the idle air control valve. This might be a culprit if you're having a rough idle uh, or a bouncing idle when you depress the brakes. Here we have the dash pot. This is also something that can fail and can prevent you from having a smooth idle if it does not close all the way. You can see here how it interfaces with the throttle body. The actual butterfly flap on the throttle body is actually removable if you want to rebuild the throttle body and replace the shaft seals. However, it is not recommended to remove these screws unless you have to. If you have no play, I would just leave it alone. Now, since we do have the throttle body off the truck, we can check our throttle position sensor if we suspect it is giving us problems. Now note, if you do undo the throttle position sensor and move it at all, it will have to be reset. You can do this with a multimeter, uh, but if you undo it, you will have to reset it. If you take off the throttle position sensor, we can then check to see if it has mechanically failed. The spring here should return rather quickly 
as it does here. This is a good sensor. If it doesn't, then you may need to replace the sensor altogether. It's also a good idea to replace the little JIS head screws that hold it on with some Allen head screws. This allows you to very easily adjust it while still on the truck. We can then go ahead and clean off the throttle body with some brake cleaner or throttle body cleaner to make sure it is all nice and clean. Uh, my throttle body here is actually pretty clean already since I've taken it off the truck before once, uh, but you may have to remove some carbon deposits in order to get it running smoothly. Before reinstalling the throttle body, we should also make sure that the gasket surfaces are spotless. So use a plastic scraper and clean it all off. Here is a throttle body rebuild kit that comes from LC Engineering, comes with a gasket, the two shaft seals which I did not replace, as well as a new idle set screw. Now these idle set screws can also cause some problems. Uh, one of the main issues is that the little rubber o-ring here gets hardened over time and actually lets air through causing a small vacuum leak. Some people recommend using Teflon tape or plumbing tape to just tape over your screw and prevent air leaks from happening. Uh, however, you can also just buy this new idle screw from LC Engineering, which I find to be a much better option. It's a very nice quality piece. It has a brand new o-ring on it. And uh, because it's a little bit taller, it's a little bit easier to adjust as well. Uh, I, so I went ahead and bought this. Uh, before installing, you should definitely put a little bit of silicone lubricant or grease on the O-ring itself, and then it simply just screws in. Uh, you can adjust this later on the truck. If you have it in all the way, it might have a too low idle, so you can back it off a bit. We can then also remove the old gasket. You see here mine had started to deform a little bit, allowing carbon deposits to get in behind the gasket, uh, which was the primary reason why I took the throttle body off. So you can go ahead and use a plastic scraper to go ahead and scrape off all of your old gasket. This does take some time if it's been caked on there like mine was. Um, I did eventually resort to using a uh, razor blade, but you want to be very careful if you do that because you might scratch the soft aluminum surface. So be very careful if you use the razor blade. Otherwise, if you don't trust yourself, just stick to the plastic scraper. We can then go ahead and put on our new throttle body gasket. I like to use the stud here where the nut goes on for the throttle body to hold the gasket. Then you can insert the throttle body itself before aligning the gasket with the throttle body by using one of the other bolts. You can snug down the bolts and nuts and then torque them down to 11 foot pounds with a torque wrench. Reattach your coolant hoses to the underside of the idle air control valve. And then once you have those reinserted, you can go ahead and attach all the vacuum lines. Go ahead and plug your TPS back in. And then we can go ahead and reattach the throttle cable. Now our throttle body is back on the truck. We can reattach our intake tube here and all the other tubes connected to it. And finally, we can snug down all of our hose clamps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was of help to someone and I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.